uh, different people have suggested that um, some officers fear appearing in front of the CPRB in public. Is there a feeling among the officer, officers, excuse me, that it's almost like being cast out to the lines at a Roman Coliseum for public entertainment? Uh, I think, and I obviously can't speak for all of them. Right. I can only speak anecdotally and probably some personal feelings and things that I've heard when I've talked to people. Um, you know, we're used to testifying in court. That's obviously public in most cases. It's not really that environment. It's um, the way it's set up right now, it almost is adversarial. And I think that causes them, it, it's a lot different. You go in front of a jury, those people know why they're there. You know they're not going to leave there that day and go and, you know, write an op-ed piece about whatever, you know, whatever they heard that day or their opinion about that police officer. A little bit different when you're in the room with uh, media folks who, frankly, are trying to do their job, but their job is to come up with a story, and sometimes the story is uh, that particular person, and it feels really focused on them. So a little bit more scariness factor to it, I think, a little bit more pressure when you're in that environment. Um, you know, we can get into a little bit the, the I'm assuming we're working towards the closed session thing. Yeah. And I really think in talking to the officers, the officers aren't as, you know, like I said, we go in front of court, we do a lot of public things all the time, so it's not the whole public speaking aspect, it's kind of that picking apart that goes on afterwards when, frankly, all the facts are not presented in those hearings. There's no way you could in some of these investigations. I mean, some of the I investigations are hundreds of pages, so there's no way you're going to get that in depth into it. But I think the closed session thing, and, and I'll tell you kind of where this came from, I'll tell you the history of it, and again, you can edit or cut me off or ask a question whenever you want. Um, when the Nicole folks came in a couple months ago and did the, the training session, one of the ladies was from OCC in Kansas City who did this training for us, and then another one was from Seattle, and they have, a, I believe, a board of commissioners. So she's a total civilian, never been law enforcement. Um, that's her job is to deal with the complaint process. Uh, they seemed fairly shocked that we used a system where each and every time there was a complaint, it was being rehashed in this kind of open format. Uh, they had some concerns about that, that they voiced during that training session. We go a few months later, fast forward, we go to this training session in Kansas City. They kind of brought up the same concerns. I'll tell you, seeing it from both sides, since that's kind of my job in public relations, um, you do have the side where the officers are kind of feeling like they're getting piled on or they're getting kind of picked apart when the whole things aren't known. And there's really no set procedure, so any person can ask any question and there's no, is it relevant, is it not, was it already answered? I mean, there's just kind of this lack of rules that we're frankly really used to dealing in court proceedings. But no objections or no... Anything. Right, or anybody there say, I don't really... Because, you know, we do... As an officer, you do have some things, you know, I don't know if you know what Garrity is, but Garrity rule and comes involved. When you get an IA investigation, uh, if there's any chance that there could be a criminal violation stemming from it, you have to be read Garrity as an officer. And basically what that's saying is that whatever's in your statement can't be used against you later for criminal prosecution. We're kind of in some different different waters here when we get into this because it, because it's so public. So, you know, there's some concerns, and the CPOA could probably talk better about those than I could, but... I can tell you something that I think is getting a little bit missed in this process is, and it kind of came up with the Billups appeal, because if you read any of the newspaper articles following up the Billups appeal, they kind of ripped Derek Billups apart quite a bit. I would have a feeling as a citizen, and this is kind of the example that I'm going to use, let's say uh, I have something happen in my home and I call the police there for that, and the police come and during that interaction, I feel like something bad's happened, there's misconduct, and I want to make a complaint. Well, we've got police reports that outline all those things. The complaint's been made, and since in this process complaints go through internal affairs first, that person's come in, they've talked to internal affairs, who is a police officer, so they're not finding out any information they can already. They already know about this personal thing. Let's say it's a domestic, and let's say this person's telling the officer, you know, yeah, we got into a big argument, you know, my I found out my husband was having an affair or whatever, personal things that we hear as a police officers every day. And there's something that goes on later on, let's say there's misconduct, let's say the officer blows the person off and says, well, it sounds like to me you need to get a divorce or says something that's inappropriate. So the person goes, you know what, I don't like that, I'm going to file a complaint about that. Based on the way this is being handled right now, 
they're going to pull that person in in this public forum and they're going to say, well, why was the police there? What were you talking to them about? I don't personally think if I knew that that was going to be the expectation of me as a citizen was that I was going to have to go out, go in front of people, and, and I don't even really mean the board, and that's the, where the closed session part comes in. Really what it comes down to is would you want to go in front of the media and say, well, I called the police to my house that night because my husband's having an affair and I found out about it. I seriously doubt that's something that you want the entire city of Columbia and beyond to know about. And I think that's why the other people that have seen this have kind of been a little shocked that we take that route. The other issue that we find internally is when we get a complaint, part of what Internal Affairs has to do is everybody that the complainant's identified as a witness or that we've identified as a witness, just like you guys got identified as witnesses that night at the mm -hmm. Wilmoth tasing, um, we got to go and talk to those people. So those people are all interviewed, we get a statement from them, it's put in writing, it's all in an Internal Affairs report. The method we're doing now, when those people come in front of the board, which, by the way, all of a sudden these additional people can come out of the woodwork that we've never interviewed, that we don't know anything about, which could have made the finding go one way or another, tipped it to, you know, exonerated, sustained, who knows, because we didn't have all the information. Let's say it's somebody who we did interview and now they're in front of the board. Well, no one's going back and, or even having their initial internal affairs statement in front of them going, okay, I see where, you, well, you said that night this happened, but now you're saying this. And that's kind of important. I mean, as a witness, because that's what would go on in court. I mean, we all know that's going to happen. That's kind of important because you have the police report. You've got what the officer's saying happened. But everybody else who's involved can kind of come in and go, well, no, here's what happened. But nobody's going back and saying, well, this says at the time you said this happened. And kind of trying to sort out those inconsistencies. Inconsistent facts. Which is what you do in, in the criminal justice process, frankly. I mean, that's kind of a core value of what we do as officers and prosecutors and even defense attorneys. I mean, that's why defense attorneys pour over police reports. That's why we do depositions. Because if we're not consistent, that could signify that there's a problem. So that's, I think, the other issue. If it rises, in most situations, most, most ways this works is board gets a case, they get a complaint, they look at the internal affairs investigation. They're getting that whole investigation. So let's say, as an example, uh, there's an incident in a gas station. And someone complains and says, you know, this officer grabbed me by the arm. They didn't have any right to do that. I looks at it, and let's say they say, no, nothing happened. We, don't, we think everything was fine. Doesn't look like there's any, any complaint. But the person goes and complains to the board. The board looked at that internal affairs investigation. They said, well, we see this happen to Phillips 66 over on Range Line. Um, you know, it's really funny, it doesn't mention in the internal affairs report that they reviewed the video from the gas station. That's probably pretty important. Now, we would never not look at the video, but I'm just using this as an e easy example. What we think should happen is the board should say, hey, internal affairs, why didn't you look at this video? Or why didn't you talk to this witness? That's something we think needs to be included. Because they don't have a budget to have investigators. They just don't. I mean, you're talking a substantial amount of money. And the purpose of IA, even though they are police officers, and I get the argument that, you know, it's, it's hard for them to be neutral, their job is to be pure fact finders. So what we feel like should happen is the board says, we think there's a deficiency in this IA investigation. We want them to do, go back, and we want them to talk to this person, look at this video, and then tell us what they find out. And we want to see the video, too, because that's fine they get all that stuff. Instead, we're doing this, pull everybody in, you know, ramp the whole thing up again, bring everybody in, but we're not comparing things like we talked about, and so we think that's causing a problem. So the recommendation has been if there's not a deficiency in the investigation or there's not facts that they, the, the review board members think have been left out, then why do we need to go through all this again? Okay.